Hi, welcome back to my channel, beautiful minutia. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany and I am doing a week-long reading vlog this week. This week is the Hey Readerathon, which is hosted by Chantel. Well, it was Chantel at An Intentional Life, but she just changed her channel name to Chantel Reads All Day, which is just a wonderful channel name. I love it so much. Anyway, she hosted one of these readathons last fall and it was actually the very first readathon that I'd ever taken place in in my life. So the Hey Readerathon has a very special place in my heart. It was like long before I ever joined booktube or anything, but she did do another one this past spring, which I did vlog during that one as well. And it was my very first vlog. So I will link that one if you want to watch that. So for the Hey Readerathon, it's a week long and there are four prompts to fulfill and basically you're just trying to read as much as you can. And it kind of works out awesome because Dewey's Readathon is on Saturday. So um, that's part of it too. It kind of some crossover, which is nice. So I'm going to share the books that I am planning to read this week. Maybe, hopefully. <laughs> so the first prompt is an epistolary novel. I just recently bought Daddy Long Legs by Jean Webster and heard some mixed things about this. I've heard some people say they absolutely love it. I heard some people say that it's basically like if Annie had married Daddy Warbox, so it's a little cringy in some ways. <laughs> so we'll find out. Epistolary novels are so not my favorite. I know a lot of people who love them, but most of the time when I start an epistolary novel, I DNF it because I really just have trouble getting into it and connecting to the characters in an epistolary format. If there are letters sprinkled throughout, kind of like I think of like Emily of New Moon, like I love that. But an entire book written in letters is really typically not my jam. However, this is really short. So I feel like maybe I can get through this one. I'm going to try. I really love the cover. So we, we will see. Another prompt is short stories. And I didn't grab my book for this. Um, you'd think I'd be better prepared, but apparently I'm not. So I am reading a couple Poe short stories this week with Kelly from Cozy Reader Kelly. We read a ton of them together in September and that's kind of carried into October, but I don't think I'm exclusively going to read Poe. I have some other short story collections that I might dip into. I have The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, which I have read the yellow wallpaper, but there are other stories in my edition, so I might read some of those. I also have Everything That Rises Must, Must Converge by Flannery O'Connor. I haven't read any of hers yet, and I know in January there are some people hosting a Flannery O January, so I'm looking forward to participating in that, but I might read one or two of these. And then I also have this lovely Du Maurier collection, which I have read most of Maurier's short stories, but there's one in here that I haven't read, and I wouldn't mind rereading some of the ones that I did read. Some of my favorite ones are in here. The Apple Tree is a really good one. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones. And the illustrations in this, let me see if I can find a good one, are really pretty. And so looking forward to probably dipping my toes into at least the one of these that I haven't read yet. Another prompt is a classic, and I'm right in the middle of a bajillion classics right now, thanks to Victober and the Crime and Punishment read-along, so I was kind of having trouble because the book I wanted to read this week was a Victober prompt, and it's Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. Tons of people have been reading this lately. A lot of people have said it's like their new favorite Victorian novel, so I really want to get to this one, but... I am also supposed to be reading Bleak House and I'm not very far in it at all. It's really bad. I've had trouble getting into this one. There are moments where I'm in the mood for it and I fly through some chapters and then moments where I don't because the writing style is just like, it switches from a first person past tense narrative to then like this weird present tense narrative and those chapters are more difficult for me to get through. So I probably will be working my way somewhat through Bleak House. Then on my Kindle, um, I am reading The Picture of Dorian Gray. I'm buddy reading it with my friend Jessica and then Angie from Literary Labors. I was hoping to finish that one last week and I totally didn't, but neither did they. So we're kind of like all on the same page. <laughs> I am about halfway through that one and it's a shorter one. So I am going to try to finish that one first. And then I really do want to read Lady Audley's Secret. So we'll kind of see how that goes, but <laughs> just like the short stories. 
I kind of have a bunch of options for this one. And then the last book is like fall five. So I have The Bones Will Speak by Carrie Stewart Parks. This is book two in her Gwen Marcy series. The first book, A Cry From The Dust, I read last year during the Hay Reader Thon and just loved it so, so much. I loved the mystery element and there was a cult element to it as well, which I love books with cults in them. I don't know what that says about me, but I do. So this is my pick for that one. And I feel like I should be able to get to this one because like I fly through thrillers and mysteries. So shouldn't hang me up too much, I don't think. So it is Monday and this readathon starts Monday morning and then goes through Sunday night. So I have a lot of time to get some reading done. So we will see how far I get in some of these but I'm really looking forward to taking you along with us. I say us, my daughter's participating too, so we'll include her in it. Maybe we'll share her picks at some point. Mondays are my husband's day off, so we're kind of just having like a chill day, which is nice because last week was crazy. Um, we had just a lot of stuff, a lot of places we had to go. We had doctor's appointments, multiple ones for multiple people in the family. <laughs> we had just, my husband went out of town twice. And we had like a big event for our church, actually multiple events for our church. So it was crazy and we barely like spent any time together and weren't even home all that much. So this week I really don't have that much on the agenda other than like normal stuff, which is super nice. I'm really excited about that. So today's plan is I think we are going to go apple picking because the weather is finally so nice and cool. So it feels like good apple picking weather. It's going to be pretty much a chill day. such a nice day today um weather wise and just in general it's been very relaxing um it's really nice to go apple picking earlier the weather has just been absolutely gorgeous so i'm really happy about that i am now 61 percent of the way through dorian gray and if you can hear noise in the background first of all my husband and my daughter are playing basketball in the back and then there's also some farm equipment across the street that is starting to take down the really dry cornfields, which could potentially mean that I'm gonna have some allergy issues this week. We'll see. Anyways, 61% of the way through Dorian Gray. I'm, I love the writing style of Oscar Wilde. I have never read any of his books before or short stories or anything, but I am really, really, really enjoying the writing in the picture of Dorian Gray. It is just, it's so vivid and so beautiful. It is really kind of like my kind of writing style. I just love the way that he describes things. That being said, <laughs> I hate every character in this book, every single one of them. And so that's making it a not very enjoyable reading process in in that sense. I just find myself really, really frustrated. So this isn't really spoilery because it kind of happens at the beginning. There's this painter who paints a picture of Dorian Gray who is just like this absolutely perfectly beautiful man. And you know, the artist is kind of, he seems kind of like in love with Dorian Gray, honestly. He's very like obsessed with him and basically worships the ground that he walks on because he's so beautiful and he believes that Dorian Gray has this wonderful heart because of it and then he has this very worldly friend who comes in and basically starts corrupting <laughs> Dorian Gray but so the painter's really placing all this blame for this on Lord Henry his friend who is a super bad influence but the painter was not a very good influence either because he just like worshipped him and that just really is not a good thing either that really was kind of tainting him as well in a different way and so I feel like that adoring worship of him and like he can do no wrong kind of a thing 
actually set him up to be corrupted much more easily than if that hadn't been the case. So at this point, Dorian Gray is being corrupted and is just becoming more and more awful, um, probably because of the friend's influence, um, probably because of the painter's influence, I think. And overall, just, I don't like any of them. I don't like any of them. So I have a very mixed um, reading experience because of it, because I really am enjoying the writing and it's so vivid and it's so beautiful and I just love the way he puts things, but just really not a fan of any of the characters. I am kind of familiar with the plot of this and I think I kind of know how it's going to end up, but maybe I don't, I don't know. I am going to try to get some more reading done this evening. We'll see how far I get. I would love to finish Dorian Gray tonight. My Kindle says I have 80 pages left out of 216. So we will see. Maybe I'll be able to finish it. I don't know. I would like to be able to finish it tonight though so I can get on with the books that I actually planned to read for the Hey reader <laughs> finished the picture of Dorian Gray. I actually finished it um, this morning. I didn't finish it last night. I fell asleep. So I finished it this morning and wow. <laughs> what a story. Like it's just it's crazy. It's just totally crazy. I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm kind of like speechless over it to be quite honest. I feel like it is one of the most beautifully written books that I have ever read. Also, there are like tractors and stuff outside for the corn still. So if you hear loud background noise, that's what's going on. But anyways, I just love the writing style. I love Oscar Wilde's writing and I can't believe this is the first thing by him that I've ever read and now I want to read so much more by him. I do have a collection of his fairy tales, so maybe that is something I can read in the future. I mean, I don't know if it's quite as beautifully written as this since it's more geared towards children because sometimes children's books tend to be a little bit more simplistic in their language, but I just thought the writing in here was absolutely gorgeous. Like there's a woman towards the beginning of the book that they describe her and say, she was a curious woman whose dresses always looked as if they had been designed in a rage and put on in a tempest. And then it says, like, when she left the room, she looked like a bird of paradise that had been out all night in the rain. I just loved the writing style. I felt like it was very descriptive, very vivid, very beautiful. Still hate, like, every single character in this book, pretty much, because there are no likable characters in it. But I, there's a reason for that. Like, that is very intentional, that none of the characters are likable. I think it's intended to be a cautionary tale on selfishness and vanity and a hedonistic lifestyle, but taken to such an extreme, like, oh my word, such an extreme. So if you like beautiful writing and you don't mind, or you even like unlikable characters, Dorian Gray might be right for you. <laughs> I also started daddy long legs this morning i only finished the first like chapter i say chapter because the first part is like an introductory thing and then the rest are all her letters and i read like the introductory part which is supposed to be like one chapter or whatever so there's this orphan her name's jerusha i think jerusha abbott but on the back it says judy so maybe she ends up going by judy I don't know. That's a little easier to remember than Jerusha. Jerusha reminds me of Veruca from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Anyway, she's an orphan. She lives in an orphanage and she's kind of like aging out of the orphanage basically. And one of the trustees of the orphanage sees like great potential in her writing and decides he wants to anonymously pay for her to go to college to become a writer. In addition to paying for all of her college, he's also giving her like a monthly allowance so she will have everything that she needs and his only stipulation is that she needs to write him 
one letter a month just updating him on her daily life and her progress in college. And that's as far as I got so that's pretty much the premise of the book. I think the rest of the book is the letters that she writes to him. When he is leaving she doesn't really see him. She just sees his back and then she sees his shadow which you can kind of see on the cover a little bit and she says like the shadow because his legs are so long and everything reminds her of like a giant daddy long legs and so I think that that is why that's the title of the book. Anyway, I like it so far. I mean, we'll see how I like it when I actually get into the epistolary part of it. I might like it a little less then. Or maybe this will be the book. This will be the epistolary book that I like. I guess we'll see. I'm also planning on reading some Poe today. Um, Kelly read some Poe over this weekend and um, I'm gonna read them and see what I think. One of them she said was like a new favorite for her. Um, so I'm like really hopeful that it will be for me too because so far like our favorites have definitely like coincided. So anyways, I need to get my day started. I have some chores and things I have to get done, homeschool that we have to get done, and some reading that I'm looking forward to getting done. I am currently cozied up in bed reading Daddy Long Legs. We were supposed to have plans tonight, but they got canceled last minute and I'm not really mad about it because it means I get to stay home and read. Um, I'm like almost halfway, I think. Maybe like a third. I don't know. Something like that. And I am enjoying this book a lot more than I thought I would. I love Judy's character. I think she is just a lot of fun and the letters in general kind of read a little bit more like diary entries than they do like letters. I could be wrong but I think I've gotten our first clue about who her benefactor may be and if I'm correct she has met him but she doesn't know who he is. I just love her. She's so funny. She talks about how her like roommates are um talking about their grandmothers and who has the best grandmother and she says um should you mind just for a little while pretending you're my grandmother i can't think of anything i'd rather have it's such a respectable relationship so if you really don't object when i went into town yesterday i saw the sweetest cap of Clooney lace trimmed with lavender ribbon i'm going to make you a present of it on your 83rd birthday good night granny i love you dearly judy <laughs> just so funny I just love the way that she writes she's just so sweet and whimsical and this book is just like sweet and cozy and cracking me up hello so last night I finished Daddy Long Legs and was really surprised at how much I enjoyed it, honestly. Like I, I said earlier, I really don't normally like epistolary novels, so I didn't really have high hopes for this one, although I had some people tell me it was like a five-star book and they loved it so much. And then I had a few people tell me <laughs> they didn't like it. So I was getting kind of mixed reviews and I don't really like epistolary novels in general. So maybe that's why I loved it so much is because my expectations were so low. But basically like the excerpt that I shared last night, it's just, it's funny. You know, a lot of the letters that Judy writes are just hilarious and I really enjoy that aspect of it. I smiled a lot. It's just a feel good little story. So I was surprised at how much I liked that. And this is the first book that I've finished that is actually technically a prompt for the Hey reader thon So that's good. <laughs> After I finished Daddy Long Legs, I read a few chapters of Bleak House. I'm about, whoa, <laughs> about a, a quarter of the way through at this point. So I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying it more and getting into it more. I kind of put it down for a little while and I'm enjoying it more now that I'm picking it up again. I was kind of struggling with it, to be honest. And you know, normally that's not the case for me with Dickens books. Um, but this one... It was like hardcore on the struggle bus and part of it is just like there's so many characters that you're introduced all to at once but in addition to that we also 
have like this narrative switch. So there's like one person who's narrating and like the first person Esther, she is one of the main characters and then we're switching to this other narrative where it's present tense. Um, and it kind of feels third person-y, but it keeps referring to one person as my lady. So I feel like there is someone talking, but I don't know who it is still. <laughs> and every time it switches to that narrative, I just don't love it. I don't like books that are written in uh, present tense anyway, but I it feels that much more jarring because it's not like it's all written in present tense. We've got like a past tense narrative and then a present tense one. And so it's just kind of been throwing me off a little bit but there was one of those chapters that I read last night but it wasn't so bad and it was just one chapter there was one section where there was like three of those chapters in a row and I was just like oh, I'm done with this so um I've had a lot of people tell me that this is their absolute favorite Dickens uh some of you here on YouTube but I also have had a lot of people message me on Instagram like a lot of friends and stuff were like oh you're gonna love it and so I was really disappointed when I was just like really not loving it, but I'm liking it more. I can't really say the story is really picking up all that much because I'm a quarter of the way through and I still kind of don't exactly know what's going on. I mean, essentially the crux of the plot is that there is this legal case that has been going on for forever. Um, it's called Jarndyce and Jarndyce and basically um, it's an inheritance case so I guess someone like left money or whatever and some of the people some of the main characters in the story are wards of this case and this case has been going on for years and it's still not settled and then I think there's some other side characters that we've gotten to know a little bit that are also potential heirs of this case and so yeah that's pretty much all that I really know so far there's been a ton of side characters that are so memorable and so hilarious and I really love them one of them is Mrs. Jellybee and then there's another one I can't remember what her name is it starts with a P I think I can't find the other person that's okay anyway they're these ladies who love charity cases and so um, they're always like doing all these good deeds um, and then you know one of them like her house is a complete mess and her children are filthy and the food isn't even cooked correctly and she doesn't pay attention to anything because she only cares about these charity cases somewhere in Africa and she can't even be bothered to take care of her family and then there's another lady who um, basically forces her children to get involved and gives them allowance only so that way they can choose which charity it goes to so she can brag, brag about how generous even her children are and so it's it's kind of amusing when those people are parts of the story. I also read another Poe this morning. I read uh I think it's called The Premature Burial. Yes, The Premature Burial. It was it was an interesting one. It wasn't really structured like some of his other stories so basically uh, the narrator's core fear is that he will somehow be buried alive because he tends to have fits where he goes kind of into this comatose state and so he's concerned that at some point he will be buried alive because he'll fall into one of these fits among strangers rather than families or friends who know that he's like this but before he even talks about that he mentions like all these cases where these premature burials actually happened and how how few people who are buried are actually really dead when they're buried. <laughs> that is super creepy and a lot of the stories I'm kind of wondering like if they were real stories that happened in Poe's day. I'd be interested to look that up. Thankfully it is much easier to monitor people's vitals nowadays than it was in Poe's day where if someone's skin got kind of cold and pale and their pulse was so faint that you couldn't even really feel it, they were you know at risk of being buried alive and then awakening while they're in a coffin which is a really horrifying thought so I really enjoyed it it was very interesting different than a lot of his other books that I'd read so today we are going out to lunch with um some friends and then I have some preparation to do for our homeschool group thing that we have going on tomorrow I have to make some cookies for that so I'm not sure how much time I'll have to read the rest of this afternoon but we did already get school done, so that is a plus.
it's Thursday and Thursday is always a crazy day in our house because it is the day that we meet with our homeschool group and Claire takes some classes and I help teach some things and it's just a good time but it's a busy day so in the morning I always make sure that I either have dinner in the crock pot or have something easy to make that night so I already have dinner in the crock pot but we sign up for specific weeks to bring snacks and stuff and so this is my week for snacks so I still have a few more things I need to do before we leave but I did want to do a quick little reading update because I don't know how much time I'm gonna have later so I started The Bones Will Speak last night I'm already about like a third of the way through it because it's just easy to fly through through. So this is the second book in Carrie Stewart Parks's Gwen Marcy series. Gwen Marcy is a forensic artist, which is really cool because I haven't really read very much stuff about forensic art. I'm enjoying this book so far. Um, it's a little, um, I'm just want to say more intense than the first one, but it's not really more intense. It's just a different type of intensity. There's definitely like some prostitution and rape and drugs and stuff going on that it's definitely not part of the first book but this is like a christian thriller so it leaves a lot to the imagination which i appreciate because i have a very difficult time reading any sort of book that contains assault and stuff so the less detailed the better for me i don't like gwen marcy is a character that is like super quirky um which may be your cup of tea may not be i don't I don't hate her but she's definitely not my favorite character because at times it kind of feels like the author is trying too hard to make her quirky and in the first book she references how she had just come through a divorce and um breast cancer like all at the same time basically and so I felt like she was kind of harping on certain things a lot that I just couldn't relate to um but it seems a little less prevalent in this book so far which I appreciate so I think I'm liking this book in terms of like the character herself a little bit more than book one. This book actually also changes a lot of perspectives and I don't remember there being multi POV in the first book. I could be wrong but uh, this one like they're switching around a lot which is not my favorite but I'm okay with it. It's cohesive and easy to follow. So yeah that's that book. Um, This morning I read a little bit of Bleak House but that's really the only reading I did other than my Bible reading because I'm trying to get ready to go but I figured I would do just a quick little reading update. I probably won't get a lot of reading done. I think I'm gonna bring Bleak House with me to our homeschool co-op but I don't know how much time I'm gonna have to read. I have, do have time in between like helping and stuff but a lot of times I'm visiting with other moms so I don't usually take a lot of time to read. We also have a meeting for archery after co-op today. They're starting like a, an archery group so my daughter's interested in that so we'll sit in on that and kind of see what all that entails and what we would need to do for that and if it's something she really does want to participate in. And now I need to finish getting my stuff ready to go <laughs> for co-op. So hopefully I will be able to check in later. just got the sweetest surprise book package ever. One of my sweet subscriber friends, Lisa, sent me a copy of War and Peace and it's so pretty. It's like linen bound. 
I have had my eye on this for a really long time because I'm hoping to read War and Peace next year. It's kind of my big book goal. This past year, my big book goal was Le Mis and War and Peace is next year's. And so I'm so excited. It was so unexpected and such a sweet surprise. So many of you who are subscribers or other booktubers that I have met as a result of booktube have become really good friends and it's just the best. This community is the best and I'm so thankful. Thank you so much, Lisa. I almost like cried <laughs> when I opened it because it was such a sweet surprise and I had no idea it was coming. So thank you, thank you, thank you. realized that I did not update on my, on my reading at all yesterday. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess I didn't have anything like super big to update. I was um, still reading The Bones Will Speak and Bleak House were the main books that I was reading and I finished The Bones Will Speak last night before I fell asleep. And it was really good. There are elements to it that I really liked. Um, I definitely did not guess who the killer was. I thought I had guessed and I was wrong. I liked the element that they're in like this small town. I think they're in like Montana, maybe? Or Washington, I can't remember. Some like northern state where they're in a rural, real rural area. And um, this person who's new to the forest like comes in and is like, well, what about this? What about these things that we can do to help solve these crimes? And they're like, this is not CSI. Those shows are not realistic. And like detailing like what small towns actually do who don't have the budgets for big computers or even the computery stuff that they always do in CSI and shows like that that like totally aren't procedural at all and so I thought that was kind of funny and I really like that. I think I liked book one the mystery in book one just a little bit better because it was a little bit more cult oriented although this one was kind of cult oriented too because this one dealt with a group it was like a, they claim to be Christians but they're like white supremacists so that was very kind of cultish at one point she like visits like a church service of theirs and it was just like whoa <laughs> i do feel like this book is more of a christian mystery than the first one first one really didn't mention a whole lot of god stuff at all except for that they just kept saying like everything happens for a reason kind of a deal and that was kind of like the overarching theme the overarching theme of this book was forgiveness and there was talks of bible study and like uh different bible verses were quoted and there was just a lot more of that in this book but it seemed fitting so it didn't seem like it was out of place or anything this morning is the start of dewey's 24-hour readathon so technically it started at midnight this morning and goes till midnight tonight which actually i was still up at midnight and i was reading bleak house so i guess i've already started it so bleak house is probably gonna be like my big project of the day because i really need to like make more headway in that. I'm over a third of the way through right now. I also haven't picked up Crime and Punishment in a while, so I gotta work on that some. Um, I haven't read that many short stories this week. I have read some, so maybe I'll pick up a short story to break things up. I still did really want to start Lady Oddly's Secret, but Bleak House just seems like more of a priority, and I'm really like into the plot now. So now I'm really into it, and I'm really enjoying it. It just took me a while to get there have no official plans for the day, which is perfect for a readathon, so we'll just see what happens. The weather is so beautiful today. It's like in the 60s and sunny, and it's so pretty. I have been reading Bleak House for most of the day and I have now officially hit the halfway point, which is exciting. 
and the chapter I just read kind of like had some plot twistiness to it and connecting some storylines which is awesome. I love like Dickens always has all these like loose threads everywhere and he somehow pulls them all together. It's kind of amazing. But yes, I'm enjoying that, but I'm kind of ready for a break. So I have two options. One it fits with the Hay Reader Thon and one doesn't. Um, the one that fits is Flannery O'Connor might read a short story of hers. I keep meaning to, and I just haven't. And then I also have Elizabeth Peters' Crocodile on the Sandbank, and I'm supposed to be buddy reading this with someone, and they've already started it, and I haven't. So I might do that. I really am not sure. I'm trying to like kind of like decide what I'm in the mood for, but I think I am in the mood for a little break from Dickens. <laughs> as much more reading this afternoon as I originally planned. I did read the first short story and that Flannery O'Connor book, Everything That Rises Much Converge. That's also the name of the first story in there. Really enjoyed it. It was not at all what I was expecting. Um, very much tackled topics of racism during the civil rights era. And I guess I didn't really know what to expect at all. I just knew people loved her. Um, and so it was not the subject matter at all that I was expecting, um, but I really enjoyed it. It was really good. Really liked her writing style a lot. And I'm looking forward to reading more of hers. I probably won't in this reading vlog. I'll probably save them for um, Flannery O'January. <laughs> but I did want to dip my toe and just kind of see like what her writing was like before I committed to be part of that. <clears throat> After that, I just basically hung out with my family for a while because <laughs> we were kind of like ignoring each other a little bit today. Not intentionally. My husband was working and I was reading and my daughter like flew through Princess Academy by Shannon Hale today. Like she started it last night and she finished it like this afternoon. She just flew through it and really, really loved it. So I pretty much didn't see her all day because she was reading too. <laughs> So we hung out for a while um, and creeping up on her bedtime and Krista over at Books and Jams is doing a live reading sprint so I will probably hop on there and participate in that and hopefully get a bunch more reading done tonight. Krista's live which was fun so if you haven't been on reading sprints before it's basically like you talk for a while and then you read for a while and then talk for a while and then you read for a while so it was a great way to get some more reading in while also not feeling like I was just sitting there and reading for hours so it was kind of nice so I read a few chapters in Bleak House so I'm continuing to make progress in that and then I also read an Edgar Allan Poe short story, The Oblong Box. It's one that Kelly was reading this weekend. She's also reading The Imp of the Perverse, which I have not read yet, but we'll probably try to read tomorrow, maybe. Or maybe tonight, if it's not too spooky. Just depends. I don't like reading spooky stuff right before bed because then I have trouble sleeping or have weird dreams. <laughs> Um, so anyways, the album box was pretty good, but it was not one of my favorites, I don't think. I just wasn't as invested or engaged in the story as I am in some egg ground poems. So I liked it, but not a five star, not a new favorite. Um, I felt like I needed a little break, so I decided after that that I was going to pick up Crocodile on the Sandbank. I am two chapters into this and it is set during 
I think the 1880s. And so Amelia Peabody is this lady who her father has left her like all of his fortune. And so she decides that with the money she is going to travel. And so she's traveling to all these places that her father loved studying and stuff. So she's in Rome and she's supposed to go to Egypt, but she wants a traveling companion. Her traveling companion gets sick, has to go home to London. And she's like met this girl who is like fainted in the streets. Um, and basically she decides she's going to take this young girl with her as her new companion. So I haven't gotten to the point where they actually go to Egypt or there's actually really any mystery or anything to solve. So I'm looking forward to that. But Amelia Peabody is just like, she's kind of funny. She's like, a, I don't need no man, sassy pants girl, <laughs> which was not a common thing in the 1880s, but her, she's just really snarky and it's kind of funny. So I feel like this will be like a more entertaining and easy read in the midst of reading some more difficult classics. So I think that I will enjoy this one, but it's early, so it's kind of too early to tell. It's getting late here. I think it's creeping up on 11. It's after 10.30, that's when the live ended. Um, I'll probably, I'm not super tired, so I will probably read some more in bed until I fall asleep and talk to you tomorrow. Sunday. I read a little bit more of the Amelia Peabody book before I went to bed. The story itself really hasn't picked up at all yet so it's kind of hard for me to get a feel as to like whether or not I'm really liking it so <laughs> we'll see. I do like the humor in it so um planning on continuing on with that. Uh, this morning I read a few Poe short stories the one I read last night, the oblong box, was not the one that I was supposed to be reading with Kelly. I was supposed to be reading the oval picture or portrait. That one is listed under a different section in my book. So it's not listed with the mystery and horror. It's listed with like flights and fantasy. So I totally like picked the wrong one. I don't know. Oblong, oval, I guess the shape seemed similar enough to me, I guess. Anyway, so I read the oval picture and it was fine. I didn't really feel like anything to like write home about. And then I read The Imp of the Perverse, which is the other one that Kelly read last night. And um, I was really disappointed by that one. It's the first Poe story that I have truly been super disappointed in. Kelly said it reminded her of The Telltale Heart, but not as good. And I kind of agree with that assessment because like the storyline is kind of similar in that way. It's a super short story. It's probably like four pages or something. And three out of those four pages is him talking about um, phrenology, like the study of the brain and all that kind of stuff and why humans do the things that they do and why they have like the biological impulses that they do. And then he goes on to explore like people who are perverse and that doesn't mean like perverted like it means that their impulses are different and he said like there was no real way to know why people had like these different impulses or whatever but basically kind of was a the devil made me do it kind of video like that's why it's called the imp of the perverse anyways that setup sounds really interesting but then the story itself the narrative was like so short and anticlimactic that it was just very disappointing. I actually thought all the phrenology talk was kind of interesting, but it's not what I come to a Poe short story for. I come to a Poe short story for something like creepy and macabre and yeah, and this just wasn't it. The first part felt like some sort of like 19th century biology textbook or like scientific journal and then the rest was just very vague and very short and yeah it was just disappointing <laughs> so i'm about to go to church in a little bit here but i wanted to do like a quick little update before i did that i don't have a lot of plans today so i'm probably gonna spend some time today reading also
It's Sunday evening and I took a really nice nap this afternoon so I haven't gotten quite as much reading today as I might have hoped. Do you hear my cat? <laughs> oh. She just really wants attention, I guess. Anyways, so I am going to be hopping on some reading sprints on Discord tonight. So I'll probably get some more reading done then. I have read a couple chapters of Bleak House today, but that's pretty much it. And I think this is supposed to be like a crime and punishment reading sprint. <laughs> so I may read some crime and punishment, but I'm making, I've made a lot of progress in Bleak House this week pretty impressed with that so I'm gonna sit outside and read for a little bit but I figured the best way to end a week-long reading vlog slash read-a-thon is to participate in some reading sprints so those reading sprints were a little bit of a bust. I did read a chapter of Crime and Punishment and a chapter of Bleak House, but I ended up doing a lot more chatting <laughs> than I did reading, which is fine. It was great. It was good to visit with people, and I enjoyed my apple crisp, so totally a win-win. I think I'm going to wrap up this vlog here instead of doing my customary <laughs> Monday morning wrap-up because I didn't finish any books today, so it's fine. I would call this a pretty successful reading week, you know? I mean, I didn't finish a lot of books that I would have loved to have finished, but I am more than halfway through Bleak House. I am, I don't know how far in Crime and Punishment. Still not that far. Uh, but I got time on that one. That one, the live show, isn't until sometime in November. But I did read some great short stories, and I read a Christian thriller, so... I would say it was pretty successful. Hopefully this video will not end up being too long <laughs> for you guys, but when it's a whole week, you know, there's a lot of reading and a lot of footage. And I did do a lot of reading this week. Um, my house is kind of paid for it, so I have a lot of housework to catch up on, especially since Dewey's was this weekend. I would love to hear from you in the comments below if you participated in the Hey Readerathon or Dewey's, or I've read any of the books that I read in this vlog that you like to chat about because you know I love chatting about books. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and also subscribe so you can continue to see more bookish content from me, and I will see you again next time.